Logan and then Russell, can you just introduce yourselves very quickly where you grew up and how you ended up at Lewis and Clark? My name's Logan Wacker. I'm out of Clackamas, Oregon. What made me want to come to Lewis and Clark was they were the most open campus. All the coaches, all the players, most welcoming. Awesome. And Russell? My name is Russell Mazoy. Um senior at Lewis and Clark College. I'm born and raised from Honolulu, Hawaii. I chose Lewis and Clark because a couple of mentors from my high school decided to come over here. And my high school was big, like D1 prospect, like Hawaii in general is like just full of D1 talent. And so I saw this really as an opportunity to be able to play in a, an environment that I could actually compete in and do well in, and as well as like be part of a great community. I hear you say like, oh, I got a lot, bunch of D1 talent. So when you hear a teammate or maybe a brother of yours say, oh, I'm going to D3 is like, oh, you're going to D3? Come on, man. Get out of here. Is that the response you get or do you get a different response? I'm 5'6", 185, and I've been probably about that stature. I've gone stronger and weaker and faster and slower, but I've probably been that since high school. I played O-line. The starters that were over me my junior year in the class above were UCLA, Princeton. We got Last Chance U in there too. We got Clemson. There was never that really disrespect or that like disregard for me choosing D3. If I was a foot taller, things would be different, but it's not. I think I got a lot of respect just because of the work I put in. This was like D3 to me was the highest level attainable for me, especially being a lineman. I felt pretty lucky to just be here in the first place. And I think from what I'm hearing from you, Russell, is just if you put in the work and the opportunity presents itself, the respect is there because you put in the work. If you just keep reaching for the next step instead of climbing down or just settling for what you can get off natural talent, off innate talent, yeah, I think there's a lot more respect than that. Back to you, Logan. You might start to get some emails from your coaches. And did you ever get any emails like, hey, guys, we we got this really large incoming class here. So expect that or something like that. Or did you like not notice that until you got on campus? It was always talked about throughout my recruiting process. We have a lot of guys coming in because we're taking this program to the next level. I thought that was awesome. I thought that was an opportunity to compete and go into a program that's going to be young coming in. And by my senior year, we have a bunch of guys. I guess I could switch to Russell's perspective on this. Lewis and Clark, maybe not the absolute largest of the roster sizes. As a musician myself, when you play in a small ensemble, you learn to appreciate those connections that you do have. Knowing you have this larger incoming class, where does that leave your perspective on the program that's been moving in the direction that it's been lately? Like you said, smaller groups entail closer chemistry. And that's kind of been my experience, especially me. I came in 2020 at the height of COVID. So my freshman season was canceled. Not even all of the boys there, like, you know, just whoever could afford to stay in school and who those who chose to prioritize school over a fifth year season and things like that. So we didn't even have the full group. Group. I'm a senior now. So my freshman year was exactly like you say, it was just close knit, like a small ensemble. It's been no secret that we're trying to get a bigger roster. It's been no secret that we're trying to up our recruiting since my freshman year. Like my class, class of 2024 is maybe like 13, 15 seniors deep, whereas our next freshman class is 45 deep. So it's been an interesting transition for us. I feel like the seniors and the upperclassmen are really close knit together. And it's not that underclassmen are casted out. It's more of just, uh, it takes a little more more time, you know, when my class versus the freshman class is three times the size. It just takes a while to sift through everybody and like have those sit downs like, hey, you know, where are you from? What are you into? You know, what are you looking to study? Like, what are you worried about? And things like that. Kind of just breaking it up and chopping shop a little bit. But yeah, like I said, though, it's been no secret. Recruiting starts for us right after season, right before that winter or right around that winter break. And we knew from the start, even the year before, before Logan's recruiting class, that we've been having a lot of guys stay overnight, a lot of overnight visits, a lot of guys guys looking hardly ever anybody not having a recruit in their dorm on those scheduled weekends you beat george fox for the first time ever congratulations to both of you so you've probably heard your upperclassmen oh my god it's it's george fox they're probably gonna beat us because they beat us every single time so what was your uh, mindset going into the game and um how did you guys execute knowing you were going to face a challenge really there was none of that talk that we couldn't beat that team everyone was on the same page the whole week we had player-led meetings, everybody pouring their hearts out, talking about how we can't sit back anymore and see what happens. We we have to go play and beat this team. It's our time. So nobody had that doubt throughout the week. We wanted to win that game. We wanted it more than George Fox and 
that's what it came down to. Russell, um, who was your previous head coach you were under before Joe Bushman? Coach Jay Losey. With respect to Jay Losey, what do you see from Joe Bushman bringing to the team now that you've seen the leadership of both coaches? I just got to say, first and foremost, I, I love Coach Losey. You know, he really took care of me. Like, he was a big part of my recruiting and talked to my parents and everything coming here. Coach Losey's had a long and successful career. For me, personally, we ever had, like, a Super Bowl game. You know, you know, like how some, some teams say, like, we're playing this team. They're not that good but for them it's the super bowl because they're playing us i've never had that feeling with coach losi where he was like this is the most exciting thing ever and i'm like here 100 percent. he was always very calm collected and organized with everything but coach bush just brings a different energy to it before coach bushman became head coach he was our offensive coordinator and he would just bring an energy about him like it doesn't matter if you're doing all right if it's not perfect he doesn't care you better get it right you better fix every small detail like he is very dialed in or that respect. And he's coming from a high school program. I feel like our levels of excitement for what we're doing here are pretty matched. Like the ball is moving with him all the time. And there's nobody, even with our 45 deep freshman class, there is nobody that can hide from the spotlight that can get away with not doing full effort or, you know, finishing the rep and everything. During warmups, it can be brutal. Like we're, we're, we're hard on it. We're hard on it. Like, you know, just during warmups, we, we bear crawl if you don't want to jog through the line, you know? And that's just like the little subtle differences with Coach Bushman. Like Coach Bushman introduced things like breakfast club. If you're late at all to meetings, you will be at the field at 6.30 in the morning on Friday or Monday running your ass off because that's the standard that coach bushman wanted to set logan your turn having been recruited by coach bushman what have you seen from him just comparing him to all the other coaches recruiting me he knew me i wasn't just another recruit he was trying to get under his belt he remembered our conversations he remembered everything he was just really personable compared to other coaches just shooting me a text every couple days now nah, coach bush he would call me have conversations with me tell me how much he wants me on this team and that's what the difference was i wish people would ask and they probably don't ask this because they keep going back to the same schools over and over again but this is my first time talking to you guys from lewis and clark as much as you both love football football is not a major at lewis and clark college why would someone go to lewis and clark college what is the selling point of the school let's turn over to uh, russell here well it's been my experience um both my parents are educators um, my dad got a job in like the federal department of education. People recognize Lewis and Clark. It's a diploma that when people see it, they recognize the institution and they believe that that's a standard that they could accept. I don't know particularly what it is, but I think it kind of comes back to community. Like for me, uh, choosing colleges, I knew I needed small classroom. I needed, I if I just got stuck in lecture halls, I'm not going to show up and I'm not going to pass. So with Lewis and Clark, like it kind of feels like I'm still in high school sometimes. Like, you know, it's the same environment, you know, 25 kids in the class, professor know you and know when you show up and when you don't. It's just so much harder at Lewis and Clark to fall in the cracks because it feels like everybody cares. Before I even got to the campus, when I was just a graduating senior, in high school, I filed for an appeal for my financial aid and the head of the office called me, not like the secretary or the assistant. Eric Staub, the head of our financial aid department, called me in the middle of the summer to let me know that my appeal has been approved and I should check my account to see what it looks like. Like it's like we were saying with Coach Bushman, it's like that extra step that also teaches you like standards of etiquette, very sincere models of like how to address people and be in a professional environment but still have that compassion and understand that you're working with students that are still trying to develop and trying to find their way. Along with that, I mean, like Lewis and Clark Law School attached like right at the half a mile away from the actual undergrad campus, you know, top 15, top 25 environmental law programs in the country. Like if you don't really necessarily believe or know too much about the undergrad, you could also look at the graduate school and the law school and see how success there is. Logan, I know it's only been five weeks of a season. If I told you to sell the school, what would it be? As a freshman, you don't really know what to expect, how life's going to be balancing education and football. But really all the professors, they're willing to help you succeed if you want to succeed. And that's the biggest thing. If I'm struggling with a class, a teacher is willing to give me 30 minutes, an hour of their time, just to, outside of class, just to help me succeed. And that's huge. And there's so many resources on campus that we can go to. If you want to succeed, they help you. 
and you can succeed. Awesome. I guess the last thing we'll talk about is the Oregon Cup. I'll just explain it one more time. Lewis and Clark, Pacific, Willamette, George Fox. Those four schools have decided to come together. We're going to play each other once more to have a... 10th game, basically. Some of you might be left with two bye weeks and nine games. What does that mean for you both? Russell, we'll start with you. I'll tell you this. Like, my last two seasons, we played Linfield literally the last game of the year, back-to-back, and it's... We don't roll over and give up. Like, you know, we've had... We've definitely put some great film out there against Linfield in the first half or second half, but... I've seen that film. <laughs> it, yeah, it's tough. It's tough, you know, dealing with that. And I think what... The Oregon Cup to us really reinforces it's that these teams are made of flesh and bone. Like just because Linfield has like an amazing like has had an amazing like program and system and coaching and everything. It doesn't mean they're invincible. Like the Oregon Cup may be a consolation prize, but I think to us it's a reminder that we're all just schools within earshot of each other we are like you know linfield is an issue for everybody i think it just draws attention and reinforces the fact that we're just teams playing football just because linfield that as is great every year doesn't mean there is no reward or gratification and suiting up every weekend and dedicating ourselves to the program and the sport that we love is a winning season by lewis and clark inevitable in the next few years yes and why just because of the growth that we've seen um, we have a couple of super seniors on our team still yet, like Cruz Montana, who's been our starting quarterback for ever since I've got here. But every all of the old boys will tell you, especially the older ones, like my mentors a few years ago, they'll all tell you that this program is constantly changing. And to, like, like you were saying before, in 2005, we were about to disappear from the face of the earth. And now we beat George Fox yesterday. There you go. It's... it's I, I honestly was a little like skeptical about being able to break patterns and everything with this team. But after that, I believe anything. This team can really do anything. After going to George Fox at home and ruining their homecoming when they're filled when their stands were filled and the energy was there on their side of the, any I mean, What? We lost to Lewis and Clark? That never happened before, <laughs> you know. Use it to my ears, that one. Yeah. <laughs> there you but, go. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, after yesterday, I mean, sky's the limit as far as I can tell. This isn't the same OLC I've been a part of the past couple of years. We're definitely moving big steps every day. And you got a bright future ahead of you, Logan. What's your response to that? Yeah, uh, we have a ton of young guys with major roles on the team. And we have a, a lot of guys breaking out, man. I, I think we're just growing. We're on an uphill from here or i don't know how to say that but you we're going up from here and we're just going to keep building and i feel it i feel the energy awesome well uh thank you so much both of you for doing what is my first ever interview with a d3 with d3 football athletes uh i will be i'll definitely be keeping a guy an eye on you guys uh in in the next few years next few weeks and um i also from what i'm hearing i actually i also do believe that if you can beat george fox you can have a winning season and that's a huge accomplishment in of itself so thank you so much both of you guys for um taking the time to speak with me awesome. thank you appreciate it thank uh, you so much absolutely you guys have a nice one all right and yeah go pioneers i guess <laughs> yes sir all right Bro, all right goodbye goodbye I'm- guys see ya